In this video, I'm sharing my process for using Adobe Illustrator alongside Procreate to create a precise, custom set of Procreate calendar brushes. We're gonna start in Illustrator first, and I wanna preface this by saying this is more of like a general process overview video rather than like a exact step-by-step -step tutorial because if I did it step-by-step, -step, it would be like an hour long, and you probably don't wanna sit through that. So I wanna give you a basic overview of the process in case you would like to integrate Adobe Illustrator into your workflow when creating Procreate brushes. And the reason why I'm using Illustrator is because Procreate lacks guidelines that are movable right now, along with exact increments so you can be super precise, but Illustrator does have that and it's really, really easy to use. So I wanna show you what that looks like. First, I'm starting with an artboard that's the exact same size as my canvas for the brushes and Procreate. So that is 2,500 pixels by 2,500 pixels. So just make sure you've changed your increments over here to pixels. And I'm working in RGB and it's 300 PPI. So I'm gonna hit create. And when you have your artboard, the first thing that I need to do is draw some lines. I have a standard format and a vertical format in the calendar kit. So I'm just gonna show you what the standard looks like, but it's the exact same process for vertical. You would just change where your horizontal lines fall on this if you want it to be more vertical. So I'm going to grab my line tool, which is right here in your art box. And I'm just going to make eight of these across and I'm going to apply a five point weight to it. And actually that's kind of tall for what I want to do. And like I said, there's going to be eight of these across so I can just duplicate and then duplicate again. And now I've got eight and I'm going to get it pretty close to the edge. So I'm filling up the artboard or the canvas. Once we get into Procreate, I want to maximize the size of these brushes. So now I can select all of these and then up here, I'm going to horizontally distribute. You can also get to this by going window align and it'll pop up over here. So I'm just going to hit that. And now these are all evenly distributed. Now I'm going to draw some horizontal lines using the line tool again. So I'm just gonna come across these ones. And then once again, I need eight of these. So I can just select these two and copy and then these four and then copy. And I wanna make sure that it hits the bottom right here. And now I can just select the horizontal ones and vertically distribute them. So now I've got a kind of a standard looking calendar, but now I also need to make room for the weekday abbreviations in case my users wanna include that in their calendars. So I'm just going to make a copy. I'm holding Alt, clicking, and as I'm dragging, I'm holding Shift to keep it straight. And then I can select all of my vertical ones and then just drag these up. And now those are all taken care of. And now I've got my grid. And this will be a grid brush that we create and procreate. I'm going to select my grid. I'm going to group everything together. This is on its own layer. I'm going to lock it so I don't mess with it. And now I wanna show you how to make blocks. I also provided the option in my calendar kit to use the blocks for the dates if you don't want a grid look. So I wanna show you how I did that. I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool from my art box and come over here. I'm going to draw a perfect rectangle that follows the size of one of my squares, rectangles, and switch so it's a fill instead of a stroke. So now this fits in here perfectly, but I don't want them all to be touching each other because I don't want like this giant rectangle full of little rectangles. So I need it to be a little bit smaller. I need it to be brought in and on on all four sides in the exact same amount. So a really easy way to do that in Illustrator is if you go up to Object, Path, Offset Path. And I like using negative 10 pixels for this particular grid. And you can see what that looks like. All four sides are brought in exactly 10 pixels. So I'm gonna hit OK. But now I have two rectangles right here. So I need to select the outermost one and just delete it. And now you can see how nicely that fits in there and I can have that exact amount within all of my squares, so it'll look really nice together. If I zoom out, I'm going to grab another one and put it right here. And I'm just gonna do the exact same thing that I did before. I need seven of these this time because I have seven days of the week. Let me make sure that this one over here is perfect because then I can just use my align option all right, that looks good. So I'm gonna select all of these and then distribute them. These all look good, I can group them and then I'm making a copy and I can make all the copies that I need. 
And I don't have to be perfect on these, I just need to be perfect on the last one. As I said, this is a process overview, so this is not meant for you to follow along every step. I just want you to get the general idea of how I worked and how I made all of this work. So I'm going to select all of these and then distribute them vertically, and now everything looks good. And then I just have these ones up at the top, which are obviously a different size, but I can work with exactly what I've got. So I'm just going to make a copy of this row and make sure the sides and the bottom look good. And then if I grab my direct select tool, which is this one right here, I can just select the anchor points up here. That way I'm not selecting the whole box and just drag these ones down until they hit where they need to hit in here. So this is more of like manual, look with your eyes, but works pretty good. There we go. Okay, so the last thing that I did, let me turn off the grid now. You can see that they're all very pointy and I like softer corners, especially for a calendar. So I'm going to group all of these together, just Command G or Control G on a PC. And then I'm going into my appearance palette and you can get to the appearance palette by going window appearance and it'll pop open. I'm going to zoom in here. That way you can see what's going to happen to these corners. There we go. Hit appearance, hit the little FX stylized round corners. So I'm going to put in 10 pixels right here for my radius. And if I preview it on and off, you can see how these corners change. And I really like that setting. So I'm going to keep it, hit okay. And now we've got our rounded corners for our blocks. And we can label this in our layers palette. So I'm gonna put block here. I'm going to lock this one, turn off the visibility. I'm going to turn our grid back on. And now I just want to show you how I popped in the dates because with a calendar, you have to keep in mind that every month could start on a different date. Every month could have a different number of days. So I just made all of mine go to 31 because a user who's using the Procreate brushes can just erase 30 or 31 if they don't need it, or 29 for February. And I'm going to start every single one of these on a different day. So I have to begin, let me create a brand new layer. I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard for the text tool. I'm gonna to put the number one here. It's very tiny. So I'm gonna come into my character palette. You can get to this by going window, type, character. And the font that I use for this is Lulo. It's one of my favorites. Lulo Clean Bold One. I'll leave a link to this right in the video description if you want to check that font out. And I'm going to make it really big, 75 points. So we can see it right here. Zoom up. I'm going to put all of my numbers in the upper left corner. And then I'm making a copy of this and just bringing it over here because some months will start on a Sunday or if your week starts on a Monday, It'll start at the very beginning and move this over. I actually do this manually. I know I could create a giant text box and do that, but I am a control freak and I like setting my numbers myself so they're exactly where they need to go because all of your numbers look a little differently. In this space next to the guideline, I like being able to control how much space there is there, even though it's very small. I like having the final say on that. So that's why I do each one of these separately. So I've got seven. So we're just going to pretend that I did all the numbers all the way to 31, all the way down. So pretend this is completely full now. Once I have it completely full, now I need to make another version where the month starts on the next day of the week. So in order to do that, I need to select all of my days. So pretend I'm selecting 31 days right here and I'm on a layer. So this would be like version one of the calendar where it starts at the very beginning, the first day of the month. So now I need a version two. I'm going to create a brand new layer. All of these, I need to copy them. So control C or command C. Now I'm going to lock and turn off the visibility of this layer, come up to my brand new layer, and then the command shift V or control shift V on a PC to paste it in place. And now it's in the exact same place, but now I need to get rid of this one and change all of my numbers starting from here. So then I go through and do this. So seven versions is what you need. So it starts on a different day of the week for all the days of the week. So then I end up with seven of these all the way to 31. So that's what I did. I'm going to show you the file. This is the actual file that I made for the calendar kit. And you can see my layers palette. I kept everything pretty separate. 
So this is my standard grid. I kept that on its own layer. I have my blocks right here. So that's what those looked like. And then, so this was version one, and I made an extra long version because some months, if they start on the last day of the week and they go to 31, you need an additional week at the bottom. So I made a long version and a short version of the grid. And then I also have a version where I've got the abbreviated days of the week. So I added those in there and I made an option that went Sunday through Saturday. And then I know some people like, let me find one here. Which one did I do it on? Here we go. And then I also did one for Monday through Sunday. I'm not one of those people, but I know some people like doing that. So I wanted to make sure I provided that. And then I also did a vertical version. So that's what this looked like. So I just distributed things a little bit differently here. So you could have a more vertical, you can see I was playing around with my different blocks. That's when I was figuring out how I was gonna do that. I wanted to have a vertical format for anyone who has artwork in a more vertical format, then they would have a calendar option for that too. Or if they just wanted artwork on the right and then the calendar on the left, it could be more comfortable comfortable having a more vertical calendar. I've been in those situations before, so I wanted to provide that. So you can see this is just what the vertical one looks like compared to the standard. And then I added Sunday through Saturday up at the top, as well as Monday through Sunday. So it would work for this one too. So once I had all of these layers done, and it was really important that everything always remained on its own layer, because when you're bringing it into Procreate, those all need to be separate brushes. So that normally I would not work with this many layers, but I did this on purpose. So it would be really easy to export each layer because each layer is going to be its own brush. I'm going to turn off the visibility of that one and the vertical base. I'm gonna come back to the standard. So I just would export this one on its own. So in order to do that, I would go file, export, export as. And then over here in my JPEGs, I would change this to JPEG and then I would label it. So this one would be the standard grid so I would know as I'm moving things around and then I would just save it in here and down here make sure you always check use artboards right here and then I would export it and then once I had all of these exported so I had this folder full of all of my JPEGs for all of my layers my coordinating layers I would then because I'm on a Mac I would then airdrop all of these so I would select all of these and just drag them over to my iPad to airdrop them and then they would come into my camera roll so now we can hop onto the iPad and I can show you how I take them from my camera roll, bring them into Procreate, and then get them ready to become brushes. I've created a brand new canvas in Procreate, 2,500 pixels by 2,500 pixels at 300 DPI. I work in the Display P3 color profile, but if you're on an older iPad and don't have access to that, then the default sRGB color profile is perfectly fine. We're gonna go grab the standard grid image that we saved to our camera roll that we created in Illustrator. So I'm just importing it in, and we're actually going to redraw this. You don't have to do this, but I love the hand-drawn feel of lines created with a semi-textured brush. So I'm using the Edgy Ink Brush from my Bouquet Maker brush set. It's got a little bit of a rough edge and just gives it a little bit more charm. So in order to do this, I just draw out a line, hold it until it snaps, and then in my layers palette, I'll create a duplicate of it, turn on my snapping and my magnetics, and then I can just drag it down and it'll stay perfectly straight. So I just continue this process of duplicating and then dragging it down until I've got all the horizontal lines covered. Next, I need to take care of the vertical line so it's the exact same process again create a brand new layer draw out that line wait for it to snap and then head back into your layers palette duplicate that line and then drag it downward until you have all of those lines covered once that's complete you can remove the reference image and then group all of those layers together Next, tap on the layer thumbnail, choose flatten, and I like creating a duplicate of this just so I have it for later on. And if you've created Procreate brushes before, you know you need a black background and the artwork needs to be white. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm just inverting the color and then I'm pinching them together, tapping on the layer thumbnail and choosing copy. Once you're into your brush settings, you can just paste that in. If creating custom brushes is brand new to you, I'll leave a link on screen to a custom brush tutorial. Now let's create a brush for our numbers. So I'm inserting in an image that we 
created in Illustrator. I'm reducing that opacity down, creating a brand new layer, and returning back to my edgy ink brush. And honestly, all I'm doing right here is tracing right over these. That way I've got a nice standard look to all of my letters. And they still have that hand-drawn feel. And I still change up some of the numbers here and there for what I like best, like how the number nine appeared in this font. Once I have all of my numbers complete, I can turn off the visibility of my base image and you can see what it looks like on its own. And that'll become its own brush. Now I can take care of the weekday abbreviations in the exact same way. I'm just drawing straight over them so everything is a very standard, uniform look. And again, you can see what that looks like if I turn off the other layers. And just like that, I have the artwork prepared for another brush. The blocks that we created in Illustrator are a little bit of a different story since we saved this as a JPEG and it already has a white background on it. It's already ready to convert into a brush. All I have to do is tap on the layer thumbnail and choose copy, head into my brush settings, tap on import, and then choose paste. And then I just need to invert the colors by tapping with two fingers. And now the brush is all ready to go and I can test it just by creating a brand new layer, choosing a random color, and tapping it in. Now I wanna show you the Procreate file that I created for this entire calendar brush set so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. So I have all of these layers where I redrew every single instance of where the days could fall in the month. So every single one of these starts on a different day and goes all the way to 31 days. And then this is the vertical format and I did the exact same thing right here. You can see the first day of the month starts on a different day of the week for each one of these and every single one of them goes to 31 days. So the user has plenty of flexibility. Now that we have the calendar brushes, I wanna show you how these work. So I have some artwork here and a space for a calendar. I'm going to go into the calendar brush set. I'm going to choose the standard blocks. I'm making it the same color as the background of the artwork, but you can see that it's just a little too big. So I'm changing the size to 25%, stamping it in, and then just making sure everything is aligned. Next, I'm creating a brand new layer. I need to choose a different color for my numbers. The stark purpley color, and I'm going to use the standard 05 because it coordinates with the upcoming month, February. So I'm going to change the size once again to match the same as my blocks, which is 25%, and that'll ensure that it lines up perfectly. Since it's a leap year this year, I got rid of 31 and 30, and now I'm grabbing this lighter purple color for my weekday abbreviations, and then just popping those in. I used this earlier, so this one was already at 25%. And now all I need to do is add in my month. So I'm just grabbing an orange from the artwork, toggling up, grabbing February, stamping it in on its own layer, and it can actually tuck pretty well because of the way February starts right into those blocks at the beginning. But I don't like the blocks behind it, so all I have to do is grab the rectangle selection, create a selection around those blocks, and then just hit my wrench, add category cut to remove them. And I can do the exact same thing with the remaining blocks at the bottom of the calendar. And now our calendar is complete. If you'd like to create another calendar with me in Procreate, I've placed a link on screen.